And this evening, we are extremely pleased to hold this event to bring the truth forward. Specifically, this evening is devoted to the press, and there are a number of you here. And I do want to thank all of the, the people who have attended from, uh, who are non-press, the, the people who are interested in this concept and this whole idea. And we do thank you for your support. The main purpose of this evening is to speak to the press. And we're doing that because it's really the only way to get the information out. I spent about 30 years as an elementary school principal here in the city of Toronto. And at that time I was responsible for any one time between three to 900 children and a community of several thousand. And I never ever said to any one of those parents or children that I can guarantee anything. But tonight I guarantee you, and I can say that I will guarantee you that this evening and the information that you're about to hear will be the most staggering information you've ever heard in your life. And I mean that sincerely, and I'm speaking specifically to the press right now. And I know many of you are involved in the day-to-day -day issues, be it how we dispose of our waste, or guns in Toronto, or the war in Iraq. The bold statement that I have to make to you is every single issue, doesn't matter what it is, pales in comparison to what you're about to hear tonight. The information you hear tonight has the capacity to change the world. Not just now, but forever. And if you have the acuity to follow the information over the long term, not just covering a story for this evening, for tomorrow's news, or a story down the, the road in a, in, a, in a magazine or a newspaper. That's great. That's a super effort. But we need sustained components. We talked about to engage the media in a constant, sustained, comprehensive dialogue, and I'll get into that in a minute, about this issue. That we are being visited by extraterrestrial life forms that have been around for a long, long time. And a famous Canadian writer said at one time in a book called The Developing Canadian Community, he said, you cannot describe all situations that are going on all at once. It's physically impossible. We don't have that capacity as human beings to capture everything that's going on all at once or to speak about everything that's going on at once. And that's the difficulty. There is so much going on in this issue, it's overwhelming. It's like trying to read an encyclopedia to a nine-month-old child. There is no way that they can consume it. So tonight we hope to give you just a little bit of a taste of what's going on. And the only analogy that I can give you right now is how long is a piece of string? You just don't know how long it is. So right now, we're just going to give you a little snippet of that string. And we're hoping that you will take this story back to your editors, back to the people that you report to, to get information out. And based on what you hear this evening, and I know it will be incredible, I know it will be mind-boggling, but you have to consider it as the truth. So I've been involved in this issue for over 25 years, and you're going to hear from two individuals who've been involved that long, and even more. So I think it's incumbent upon the press and the media to look at this issue with a sustained acuity, a sustained intellectual acuity. This is not something of ridicule, and I'm dead serious here. This is not something that's oh well, little green man. It is extremely serious. The life of the planet is at stake here. And if we do not pick up on all of the intricacies of it, we will be wasting the planet. We have a responsibility to take this forward and to engage yourselves, engage the media in this whole issue. I know those are strong statements, but it's been far, far too long that this issue has sat on the back shelf. The carousel of issues revolves around on a day-to-day -day basis. Listen to one newscast, and it will capture for you 
the essence of the issues that we are totally consumed by and occupied and preoccupied by on a daily basis. This issue that has the capacity to change the world is ignored and ridiculed. And it's up to the press to look at the information, study it and examine it in a sustained, comprehensive way so that we can bring it forward. And that's the essence of this evening. I'm hoping that that message comes through loud and clear. So, without um, belaboring that point, what I do want to do is introduce Michael Burry, the Director of Extra Politics Toronto, and have him come forward to say a few words. Thank you, Victor. Uh, Victor's uh, a much better speaker than I. Uh, please bear with me. Um, the first time I heard the word exopolitics was in the fall of 2003. Stephen Bassett was planning and promoting X Conference 1, the first annual exopolitics expo held in Washington, D.C. in April 2004. Victor and I attended that conference along with a handful of others from Toronto and Southern Ontario. Stephen Greer was one of the speakers. Wikipedia, the free web encyclopedia, has the following to say about the word. At present, the definition for exopolitics is not listed in any standard dictionary, but listing, listings have been created in Wikipedia and the Merriam-Webster Open Dictionary. It offers the following as a definition. Exopolitics is the emerging field of study of the implications of possible contact between human and extraterrestrial civilizations. Critical questions include what, if any, political framework might be established between human beings and extraterrestrials, and the process by which world governments would inform their citizens of an extraterrestrial presence, should one be identified. And also the brief history of the work. The use of the term exopolitics in a formulated approach began with the work of Alfred Labramont Weber in 2000, with the publishing of his book, Exopolitics, Politics, Government and Law in the Universe. The field was further expanded by Dr. Michael Sala with the publishing of Exopolitics, Political Implications of the Extraterrestrial Presence in 2004. In April 2004 and 5, the first two conferences centered on exopolitical issues were held near Washington, D.C., titled The X Conferences 1 and 2. They were the productions of Paradigm Research Group, Stephen Bassett. In 2005, former Canadian Minister of National Defense and Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Paul Hellyer, publicly disclosed his belief in an extraterrestrial presence, including a crashed extraterrestrial vehicle near Roswell, New Mexico, in July of 47, at an exopolitics symposium in Toronto on September 25, 2005. Tonight, Exopolitics Toronto again, with the help of the Honorable Paul Hellyer, and for the first time, Dr. Stephen Greer are providing an exopolitical update. Not to take away from the presentations by Stephen Bassett, Richard Dole, and Stanton Friedman last September, Paul's participation was enormous. When he got up on stage in front of 400 people and TV Ontario and Discovery Channel film crews at Convocation Hall and said, UFOs are as real as the airplanes that fly over our head. He wittingly or unwittingly scored not a home run, but a grand slam for truth. His courage and message continues to circle the world. Paulo Harris, who couldn't make the trip to Toronto because of uh, illness, has made Paul an icon in Italy. Next month, Paul will be the keynote speaker at the ET Civilization and World Peace Conference on Hawaii, organized by Michael Sala. I will be attending the conference to be part of the Canadian cheering squad for Paul. One of the things I've always wanted to do was swim with dolphins in the wild. And I'm happy to report that I've already booked a swim with Joan Ocean and the dolphins before I leave Hawaii. And here was my dilemma. Less than two weeks ago, approximately 400 bottleneck dolphins washed ashore on the coast of Sander Park. No one knows what caused their deaths. Many people suspect the HARP program, where the depths of the oceans are being bombarded by high frequency noise. If while I'm swimming with the dolphins, what if I sense that they are in pain? What if I hear their cries? What am I supposed to tell them? That our human species have become so self-enamored with material things that the rights of other species that share this planet do not matter? <coughs> Some days I think we humans are nothing but frauds. 
We look like we are for stewards of this planet, but in actual reality, we have not earned the right to be stewards. I think nothing short of a planetary attitude adjustment is required for us to get off the destructive path that we are on. I feel that disclosure is a just-in-time word and will save us from ourselves. I don't have a crystal ball and I don't know what the future holds in store for us, but my hope is that our governments, with our help, will realize that continued lying damages us all. It undermines our true potential and our place in the universe. There is no reason to withhold the truth anymore. It is just around the corner waiting to be born. I think most of us know that. We can articulate it and... Anyway, uh, I think that's all I wanted to say. I'll pass back to the beginning. Thank you, Michael. Uh, just before we get to the uh, witness testimony, which will probably be the uh, meat and potatoes of the, of the evening, uh, I'd like to let you know that the disclosure uh, DVD that we have uh, uh, will be on sale at the end of the evening. Please, uh, you'll be able to see Michael, uh, pardon me, uh, David Shishchuk, over here to my left, and he will be at the back table to, uh, to uh, sell that to you if you wish. Um, but it is a two-hour long a DVD that has all of the, not all, but most of the witness testimony that's of relevance. And in talking with, with Dr. Greer, uh, we're up to well, well over that, multiple numbers of witnesses. You just can't get it all in one DVD. We are only going to look this evening, because of time, uh, at maybe three or four. I've got it set up on the computer that we can listen to. I would guess, uh, depending on how things go, uh, three to four, possibly six of the witnesses, depending on how, uh, how much time it takes. But I do want you to hear um, the statements by Dr. Greer and by Paul Hellyer, and then to engage in a question and answer following that. So that's where we're going to go now. Let's do a very brief introduction of where we're going for the evening, and, uh, and we'll, we'll take it over from there to with the DVD in a moment. What I'd like to do is want to take this thing off so I don't um, do anybody's ears. What I'd like to do is just run through something very, very quickly with you, just to give you sort of a, an overview. And I want to let you know that there is just so much information, as I said earlier, that there's no way that you can encapsulate it this evening. I know Paul will try, I know Stephen will try. Uh, there's a very important meeting that happened this morning uh, in Mr. Hellyer's office uh, among the three of us, and the information uh, amount was just overwhelming. Uh, coming from uh, the exchange that, that, uh, that Paul and, and Stephen had um, th th this afternoon. So, uh, if you've heard this before, bear with me. If you haven't heard it before, particularly the press, get the pencils going because um, you won't hear anything like this again unless we have something like this in the future. This is a one-time shot. So, basically, um, we're here to talk about that. Basics of the briefing, it's an update, as Michael said. Um, we are involved in what we call the Canadian Disclosure Initiative, and that is sort of made up of three of three groups here in Toronto: myself and Michael, and our organization, Anthropolitics Toronto, and uh, the Disclosure Project with the director, Dr. Uh, Stephen M. Greer of Virginia, and also the Institute for Cooperation in Space. The director is Alfred Weber, and the three of us have. Um, collaborated to develop the idea behind a Canadian Disclosure Initiative to work with the press, to work with the government, hopefully moving towards uh, some sort of uh, engagement or dialogue or to make it okay to talk about this stuff. To make it okay to talk about it. Right now, it's not okay. I spoke with the news director at one of the local radio stations about three months ago, and he laughed. He just laughed when I brought this up. We don't have time for that. That's the mentality that is out there. We need to change that today. And that's why we're here. So, these three organizations, um, NGOs, if you want to call them that, but we're working harder to make sure this information gets out and then we begin to engage the press. Looking at the whole thing, what are we talking about? And this, once again, these aren't the only issues, the multiplicity of issues here. First of all, we're looking at the reality of an extraterrestrial presence. Fact. Take it to the bank. 
Number two, the authenticity and seriousness of the geopolitical policy implications. And we'll get into that this evening. Okay? Of the unidentified aerial phenomenon and of the non-Earth civilizations that are visiting us. There are incredible geopolitical implications. I'm not getting into them right now. I know the, the other uh, speakers will be soon, as you will hear on the DVD also. And also about the cover up. It's 50 year, 58 years old. I'm 58 years old. Okay? If you're going on longer, I'm not sure, but that's how long the government has been hiding this from us. And as a matter of fact, when this first started, they were just as confused as you and I are right now about this. They didn't know what to do. They were just as frightened as, as, as anything. When I think about the implications, they still don't know what to do. I'm talking about military and government. I'm not talking about big corporations. They know exactly what's going on, and we'll get into that later. Our mission, basically, to engage mainstream media. That's what we're here for. A long-term, sustained examination and comprehensive investigation of multiple, what I call, converging lines of evidence. You look at all the information, and there's so many lines of evidence. In a court of law, that's the way they develop things. They develop converging lines of evidence so the jury can come up with only one conclusion, guilty or not guilty. If you take this information to the bank or to a court of law, those converging lines of evidence, you look at all the evidence, not just one string, you look at all of the evidence, you'll come up with the undisputable conclusion that we're, there is an extraterrestrial presence and that this thing called unidentified objects or unidentified aerial phenomena are in fact true. Okay? Where do they come from? Who makes them? Are they ours? Are they theirs? Those are questions that we need to approach in the discourse. We can't provide all the answers right now. Okay? The major goals of what we're